From the Fox 11 Fieldhouse in the shadow of Lambeau Field, it's a very Fox 11 winter weather special with meteorologist Patrick Powell, meteorologist Pete Petoniak, meteorologist Phil DeCastro, and meteorologist Christian Palacio. Hi and welcome to a very Fox 11 winter weather special. We're at the Fox 11 Fieldhouse in the shadows of Lambeau Field and I'm here with my meteorologist buddies, Phil DeCastro, Christian Palacio and Patrick Powell. And we're here to look at some of the unique aspects of winter in Northeast Wisconsin. Phil, what do you got for us? Well, speaking of being in the shadow of Lambeau Field, you know, I feel like everyone at this point knows that there's a heating system under the turf, but you might not know all the technical details. We're gonna dig into the engineering behind that. Very good. Yeah. Christian, how about you? Well, a lot of people uh, struggle during the winter times of how to get through it, you know, less daylight, seems like there's less to do, but I did speak to some fellow Scandinavians on how they weather through the winter. Hmm. All right. Patrick, I know you do every year the winter weather outlook. Yep. Was it easy or hard this year? Uh, it, it gets harder every year, and I'm going to explain why it's getting harder and still have the winter weather forecast coming up. Huh, very good. And of course, I am going to introduce the names for winter storms this year. We have 10 of them. I don't know if we'll go through all 10, but last year we did go through <laughs> seven. Through a few, yeah. So let's get started. We're here in front of iconic Lambeau Field. Sometimes people call it the frozen tundra, but that's kind of a misnomer, and Phil is explaining why. It is a little bit, you know, there's just a little more technology involved uh, in the field in there versus what you might have in the lawn out in front of your home. You know, the heating system at Lambeau Field technically goes all the way back to 1967, but they have a much more modern system in place now that keeps that field from freezing up this time of the year. If you were to walk outside in the middle of winter and feel your lawn, it'd probably be frozen just as solid as this track right here. But the frozen tundra Lambeau Field tends to be a little bit softer, and that's because... It's not frozen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so, is Mike Moynihan, uh, the Director of Facility Operations for the Packers. By now, it is almost common knowledge to any football fan that Lambos Turf has a heating system to keep it from freezing hard as a rock when winter settles in. Up until 1997, electric coils buried in the turf were used to generate the heat, and for the most part, the system worked just fine, with one notable exception. The coils were in place before the infamous 1967 Ice Bowl, but they malfunctioned before the game, so the field froze solid, making for a surface just as ice cold as the people who braved the weather to watch the Packers win the NFL championship that year. Now, it's a system of boilers, pumps, tubes, and a water mixture that keep the tundra ice free. And the scale of this system is something to behold. There's 34 miles of it underneath the field. And then you, when you look at the field itself, you see the track, and there's another five miles of uh, PEX tubing under that track. So it's really wall to wall. We heat that and it does not freeze. You can actually see some of these pipes from the concourses, like these two seen just inside the south end zone, one going to the field with hot fluid and the other returning with cool fluid. They contain a mixture of water and glycol. The glycol is what keeps the water from freezing and the pipes from bursting when the system is shut off after the season. But when the system is running, it all starts right here, Lambeau Field's boiler room. Your house is probably anywhere from an 80 to a 250,000 BTU. These are 4 million each. My you know, God. You know. How many here? There's, There's 12. 12 yep. here. That's 48 million BTUs of heat. Three of those boilers are just for the field itself. The other nine are used for other parts of the stadium. It's not just the field that gets in-ground snow melting capabilities. The stairs and plazas around the Oneida and Miller gates the new upper deck above the south end zone, and the heat needed for the atrium and offices also use these boilers. They all feed off the main pumps in the boiler room. But the most important part, the field itself, gets its own distribution system. Now the Packers, as part of a multi-billion dollar industry in the NFL, well, they're set up for controlling the heat a little more sophisticated than what you might find in your house. Not only do they have all of those boilers in the boiler room, they have four pumps dedicated just for the system that goes underneath the field. And those four pumps 
push that fluid out through pipes right underneath the south end zone and out onto the field. And there's not just one sensor or even four sensors that tell you what the temperature is. They have 16 thermostats out underneath the field surface so they can know what the entire field is doing. And in between games, grow lights are put out to help keep the grass growing as late into the season as possible. Put it all together, and Moynihan says there's no weather cold enough that could freeze the tundra at Lambeau Field. It's a field that the staff are proud of, the coldest city in the NFL to have a real grass field. It's Lambeau Field. Yeah. Right? It's an icon. It's, you know, it's a bucket list for folks. And the play, what I hear, because I'm not the fields guy, yeah. But, you know, just like everybody watches TV and hears yeah. stuff, it's, uh, you know, the natural field is, is the best. It's what I hear. <laughs> We're lucky enough this year to be joined by Michelle Melby, who had a special project for our winter weather special. That's right. Thanks, guys, for having me here. I saw you gathering and couldn't resist. Gathering together and joining with friends is something we do a lot of in the winter. There's holidays, special events, a time to enjoy each other's company and maybe a glass of wine. So I brought a little something for you guys to check yeah. out and try because it has a special connection to our area and to the winter weather. So the winter weather special, our area. Before we check that out, here's some background on this unique drink. Here at the Vineyards for Parallel 44, a winery here in Wisconsin that has the perfect weather for a distinct variation of wine, and maybe you've heard about it. It's called ice wine. So we are gonna be learning a little bit more about that right now. I'm bringing in Steve Johnson from Parallel 44. First, for those people who don't know what it is, yeah. what is ice wine? It is a very rare wine that's caused by Mother Nature freezing the grapes such that we concentrate the sugars and acid of each little berry into the consistency of like a maple syrup droplet then fermented very slowly to get one of the most complex flavored wines you could produce. So in, in layman's terms, it's a sweet wine? It is. It has high sugar, but it's pressed such that the ratio of sugar to acid remains the same. So it's not overly sweet, but it is richly flavored and the, the, the flavors just linger on your palate after you swallow. And am I right that we just happen to be in Wisconsin at the perfect spot to be making ice wine. You can't grow, you can't produce this everywhere. Right, you need a climate such that it's warm enough to ripen grapes, but then cold enough to get down into the teens in December. So rarely in the wine world does it get that cold, especially on the West Coast or in Europe. But in Wisconsin, as we all know, it gets super cold relatively quick in winter. So it's the perfect climate for ice wine. We walked through the rows and rows on site where the grapes for wine grow and talked a little more about ice wine in general. Either you love it or you don't care for it at all because it's a very sweet wine, uh, but we have people calling in advance waiting for the release of it. So there are certain people who just can't get enough of it. Then Steve took me inside to the tasting room to try it for myself. Ice wine is expensive, about $50 for a half bottle. It comes in these skinny versions of the real thing. Cheers. Cheers. All right, let's try this. So oh, it is like... sweet. I liked it, and I tried it a few times. Because everybody described it as so sweet, I was expecting it almost even sweeter than that. That This is nice. This is right. nice. So you kind of want to just let it linger on your palate. Ice wine is usually made with white grapes. Its alcohol content is about 11%. Flavors of pear and brown sugar. Pear. Yeah. I can smell pear. Yeah. I could see that you just sit and enjoy Yeah. I mean, this. some people will pair it with, you know, like, apple pie are really super sweet desserts, but for mm -hmm. me it's just like, just letting it linger on your palate is like a dessert in a glass, so. But dessert in a glass, I like that. Yeah, so Not it's... bad. So keep that in mind the next time you are out and about ice wine, specific to this area because it's one of the few areas in the entire world that it has the right climate to be grown, to be produced. And Parallel 44, the winery in our area, is just one of those places where you can check it out and try some. So now that we've learned all about ice wine from our area, I thought we gotta try, try it, right, right guys? Yeah. Yeah. So pass it go. down. Thank you. Thank you. We'll check it out. Thank you. A little smidge for everybody. I'm so excited. Christian. Thank you. And I will take one. It's a sweet yeah. dessert wine. 
That right? is very sweet. Wow. <laughs> very it's good. It's something a little sipper for maybe after dinner or after a like dessert nice in a glass. Comfort. Definitely a dessert wine dessert for sure. <laughs> right? Cheers. 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 Stay tuned. Pete will reveal this year's winter storm names. It's just a taste of what's to come on a very Fox 11 winter weather special. Welcome back to the Fox 11 Fieldhouse in a very Fox 11 winter weather special. When you hear that a winter storm has been named by Fox 11, and remember this comes with a bit of history. A cabinet in the back corner of the Fox 11 weather office holds files from more than 35 years ago. One of those files is labeled snowstorms 1987-88, the first year Fox 11 started naming winter storms. But back then we named winter storms after local cities like Ashwaubenon and Black Creek. We even had one year where we named snowstorms after Packers players, like Snowstorm Brett in 1999-2000. Since 2004, we've used popular proper names for the winter storms. One of the reasons we name winter storms is the same reason the National Hurricane Center names hurricanes for identification purposes. And we don't name every storm. The most common reason we name a winter storm is because the Fox 11 meteorologists think it will bring at least five inches of snow to more than half of our viewing area, but other factors are taken into account, like how strong the winds will get, and that could lead to blowing snow or whiteouts, and if there will be ice accumulations resulting in power outages and very slippery roads. And we take into account the timing of the storm, too, if it happens during a major event, holiday, or at drive time. Last season, the biggest accumulations fell during winter storm Grant in late March. That dumped more than a foot of snow in a localized area around Green Bay to the Fox Cities. Much of it melted quickly. Winter storm Delilah impacted more of the area with a widespread 10 to 14 inches of snow on February 23rd. And now we're ready for this upcoming winter with 10 names, and they are Avery, Bennett, Cora, Declan, and Elsie. And the second five are Fletcher, Gracie, Hector, Amelda, and Jack. Last year we had seven names of winter storms, but the two previous seasons we just had one storm each year. To see how many we name this year, stay tuned. Winter can be a magical time of the year. A lot of times people are just looking for a way to enjoy the nice weather that we have during the winter. Christian is going to take a look at some philosophies that may surprise you coming up after this. Welcome back to the Fox 11 Fieldhouse in a very Fox 11 winter weather special. Each year, people often ask, is the winter forecast accurate? Well, we went back and looked at the last 17 years of doing the winter weather forecast here in Green Bay, and I think there is value to it, especially if we start adjusting for the changes that we're seeing in the climate. Inside the forecast range, we've had seven very close, but just on the edge of the range, we've had six forecasts and flat out bad forecasts. We've had four, so I think 13 of the 17 really had some value. 60 to 70 inches of snow was my forecast last year. We finished at 77.2 inches. So taking a look at the bad forecast, first of all, my forecast ranges here in the red. Notice we were nowhere near those in the bad forecast. The reason in all four of these winters is the North Atlantic Oscillation flipped in December, made it very difficult to accumulate the kind of snow that I was forecasting for those winters. The winters that were close, Matter of fact, most of these winters either fell just short or went just past the end of the range, fell just short of the range. I felt like if the range was a little bit wider, we probably could have got a number of those. And then the correct winter forecast, well, you can see the seven that we had that were right. This is the range forecast fell within that in seven of the 17 winters. So we try to compare this to average. What is the average temperature and are we going to be above or below that? Well, the average temperature in January 18.3, February 21.1. In December, I think December will be well above average. February, above average. Uh, January, above average. February, above average. March, well above average. I think it's going to be a warm winter overall. Matter of fact, the average winter temperature 22.2. I'm forecasting 23 to 27 as an average temperature through the winter months. So well above average through the winter temperature wise, probably a top 10 warmest winter. Looking at snowfall, again, we compare it to the averages. I think we'll be near average snow in December, 
But beyond that, below average in January, below average in February, below average snow again in March, especially with a very warm Mar March likely. Average winter snow is 55.6 inches. My forecast for this winter, 40 to 50 inches. We are going to see 5 to 15 inches of snow below average, and I think it's a warm winter overall, just with less snow. I think we may see some record warm months this winter, especially after New Year's. Below average snowfall is likely, especially after New Year's. Again, we'll still see cold snaps. It is still Wisconsin. We still get cold. I just think they're going to be few and far between. A lot of people wonder how winter's around here compared to other parts of the world. Christian took a look. Yeah, you know, there, uh, there's a lot of Scandinavians that have immigrated here, and many of them have decided to stay because a lot of them have felt that the winters here are much like at home. I'm gonna share with you their traditions and rituals that get them through the winters. You can't escape the inevitable cold, dark winters in Northeast Wisconsin. However, you might want to embrace it, much like they do in the Scandinavian countries of Northern Europe. It's called Misa or Hige. And who could explain the lifestyle better than Helene Ingsting Anderson? She's originally from Sweden and has been living in Door County for about three decades. What does Misa mean to her? It's a term of being cozy. Uh, you have an equivalent in Danish, which is hygge, and it's basically cozying up. And um, in Sweden, Misa can uh, be to have fika, which is actually having a little bit of a treat, usually in the afternoon, can be in the morning, late morning too, but fika is a big thing in Sweden. And being outside in the winter is an important part of the lifestyle. They will, you know, dress for the weather. It's very, very common, like on days off, Saturdays and Sundays, full families are out taking a hike, taking a walk. You can find Scandinavian culture in the heart of Sister Bay at Al Johnson's Swedish restaurant and boutique. It was really a great way to grow up. Co-owner Lars Johnson agrees outdoor activity is an important facet of Mesa. The more outdoor activity you can do, the better off you'll feel and, and the better off you'll be in the long run. I think fresh air really is yeah. the important part of it. And, and, you know, here in Door County, it's very similar to Scandinavia. So a lot's one of the reasons why a lot of Scandinavians have settled in Northern Door, because of the similarity. Al Johnson's is one of the few Door County restaurants that remains open in the winter. Uh, we start our holiday season, Scandinavian holiday season, on, on December 8th and 9th. And we have a Yule board, which is a Christmas um, smorgasbord here at Al Johnson's. And it's really delicious, all the all the native foods from Scandinavia, um, pickled herring, really great hams, really great fish, gravelox, um, lots of great bakery. John Nelson, who is the marketing consultant for Al Johnson's, is a third generation Swede and says that his family continues with these traditions. Swedish culture from Sweden, and this is like 100 years ago when most of our families emigrated here or even longer than that, they brought all that culture with and it still lives and breathes amazingly in families like my own. You know, we, we do Yule Board every Christmas and we, uh, Santa Lucia, and we have a lot of these same traditions that Swedes had over 100 years ago. One of the best ways to take in nature during the cold winter months and still immersing yourself in that Scandinavian culture is by visiting Bjorklinden just south of Bailey's Harbor, which was given to Lawrence University in 1963 to carry on a retreating experience from original owners Winifred and Carlton Vale. What is the significance of uh, Bjorklinden and how that um, brings the tradition of Scandinavians to this area? The full name is Bjorklinden Vidshon, and that means birch forest by the water. The students utilize this wonderful lodge, the 37,000 square foot lodge in a Scandinavian design. Um, every weekend throughout the academic year, uh, they come on intentional retreats and it could be a faculty-driven uh, thing, like focused on research or student-driven project. I learned the term huga, which um, is, ab is about a feeling of coziness and contentment that you strive for over winter. Um, it has to do with spending time with family and friends, uh, picking up that book that you haven't gotten to, uh, maybe enjoying um, some, some classic films. Right here, this is a beautiful spot because you can sit here in this cozy lodge and look right out at Lake Michigan. And if you want, you can get out in the elements and, and hear the ice kind of brush up against the shore in a beautiful melodic sound. So for this upcoming winter, if you want to have a little mesa or higge, make sure you dress warmly and step outside for a little bit. 
Go back home, light up a candle, and give you and your family members a little fika, a nice treat and a cup of hot coffee or chocolate. Just remember, the sun's longer daylight hours will come back before you know it. When we come back, we're going to test your knowledge with the weather quiz right here on a very Fox 11 winter weather special. Welcome back to the Fox 11 Field House in a very Fox 11 winter weather special. Welcome back. Let's have some fun. We all have trivia questions here for you. So are you ready? All right, let's go to number one. What named winter storm had the highest snow total in the last 35 years? Was it Felicity, Evelyn, Christine, or Delilah? It was Evelyn, a blizzard that put down more than two feet of snow in Green Bay in the year 2018. All right, next question. What was the coldest temperature recorded in Green Bay? Is it A, negative 40, B, negative 26, C, negative 36, or D, negative 46? The answer, negative 36, and that happened on January 21st, 1888. All right, I hope you were paying attention to my story. Here's the next question. How many miles of heating tubes are underneath Lambeau Field? Is it A, three, B, four, C, 3.4, or D, 34? The answer is D, 34 miles. All right, last question. When does the National Weather Service issue a wind chill warning? Is it when the wind chill reaches negative 35, negative 40, negative 20, or negative 25? The answer is negative 35. So that's it. A very Fox 11 winter weather special and great weather for it, right? Perfect <laughs> weather, yeah. And when the snow does start flying, remember, you can catch us on air, online, or We've got the Fox 11 weather app too. Yeah, actually with the Fox 11 weather app, just scan the QR code right on the TV right now and it will help you download that app right away. So have a great winter and be safe and always watch Fox 11.